chapel was crowded and silent. The preacher gave his address. He tried to be kind, but none there was blind to what the demon drink could do. Butcher Lawson sat upright and stern, but his heart was breaking in two. George Lawson had always been chapel. He never touched a drop. He taught young Johnny his son that once you've begun, you can't stop. Johnny, he listened and nodded respectful, as lads in their teens sometimes do. But his pals had other ideas, and they would taunt him so. Well, Johnny knew where to get money, his dad keeping a butcher's shop. So at last he succumbed to temptation, a path with a sudden drop. Young Walker and young Ingledew, they were not real friends of John. There were local lads he sought to impress in his hour of need. They'd gone. They said if he'd get the gin, they knew a secret hut close by an old pit shaft, whether it was Sunday or not. Daft Johnny sneaked off to meet them with a pint and a half of gin. They lit the cabin fire. John was drawn right in. When the pint and a half was supped, two went off to get more. They left young Johnny alone, sitting, propped up near the cabin door. Returning a fair while later in the February dark, they found the cabin empty, bare. Not a sign of John. He'd upped and gone, but they knew from his state he couldn't be far. They searched, and they searched, and they panicked. It was bitter dark. They went for help from the village found out in their secret lark. It was ten at night when they found John at the bottom of the old pit shaft. A sad night for the families. It was said as lads there's an outside daft. In a public room at the Wharton Arms, with the open coffin there, the Queen's coroner and the jury heard this story of this affair. So now the chapel is silent as the Wharton Arms had been, as the jury gave its verdict. Accidental death. John Lawson, age 16. Some lads fall into bother and end up with angels too soon, while others 
skirt round the pitfalls, though they try to steal the moon.